good day. It's again time for another packet tracer activity. We will be doing activity number 1.4.7 entitled Configure Router Interfaces under the CCNA v7 Switching, Routing, and Wireless Essentials or SRWE course. Let us now open our packet tracer file. Okay, so as you can see in this activity, we have this topology where two routers, R1 and R2, are connected to the internet with a dual stack server. And each of the routers are connected to two local area networks through the switches. So let's begin with this activity. Configure Router Interfaces gives us first the addressing table of the routers and their interfaces, the PCs, PC1 and PC2, and likewise for Router 2 and PC3 and PC4. Notice that the IP addresses within the network covering the domain of R1 uh, these are in IPv4 versions. While for the R2, which includes PC3 and PC4, these are in the IPv6 versions. So, the two parts would allow us to configure IPv4 and IPv6 addressing and we will be verify their connectivities at the end. Routers R1 and R2 each have two local area networks. So we'll be configuring the appropriate addresses on each of the device and their interfaces and later verify their connectivities using the ping command. We will be using the Cisco user exec password and the class privilege exec password. So let's begin with part one. We are to configure IPB for addressing and verify the connectivity. First, let us refer to the addressing table given above and configure the IP addresses for R1, for PC1, and PC2. So let's take a look at the IP addresses and begin with R1. So we go to the command line interface and enter the password Cisco, enable, and the privilege exec mode password class. From here, we have to go to our configure terminal, and then we can begin with the IP addressing of our interfaces. So let's go to the first interface, gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 and assign an IP address. So that is 172.16.20.1. Take note that the subnet mask for most of the interfaces under uh, the local area networks within the domain of R1 are in the slash 25. So what would then be the subnet mask? So let's try that in a subnet mass of slash 25, this means that we have 25 bits in our IP address which has a value of logic 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and on the last octet of that, 
subnet mask address, we have one logic one, and the remaining are all zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So this would be our subnet mask. So what would be its equivalent in decimal? Of course, the first three octet would be 255.255.255. The last octet, if we notice, would have the weights from zero or the least significant to the most significant with just the last most significant bit having a value of one. So if we take the weights, the weight for this one is one and this doubles up by so becomes two. That next position is 4, this one is 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128. So this one has a value of 128. So this will be the subnet mass we'll be using for those with the slash 25 value. So let's go back to our configuration with R1. So the subnet mask must be 255.255.255.128. Don't forget to issue the no shutdown command. Okay. We're done with the first interface. So let's continue with the second interface. So that's interface. E0 slash 1. Right? So the IP address for this is 1. 73.16.20.129. Okay, so if we didn't notice, in step one, it says there that the serial interface has already been configured. We can also verify that because this interface actually is now in a green colored indicator, therefore it's already configured. That is what we'll also be taking note when we work on with R2. Okay. Now that we're done with the configurations of the router interfaces, so we now have green indicators here. What's left to be configured are our PCs, PC1 and PC2. So let's again refer to our addressing table. Okay. For PC1, so for PC1, to configure IP addresses for our devices and devices, so we'll go to desktop and click the IP configuration. So there are two rows or groups where we can assign IP addresses. For PC1 and PC2, we'll be filling in the IPv4 address. PC1 should have 172.16.20.10. The subnet mask should be placed on the next field and that should be 255.128. Right? Don't forget to also include the default gateway, which is 172.16.20.1. That actually is the IP address of the interface where this local area network is connected. So this is the IP address of our G0 slash 0 interface where PC1 is connected. So this is our G0 slash 0, right? Okay, so we're done. We're actually done with PC1. We can now proceed to PC2. So we'll just do the same. In the IP address, for PC2, it should be 172.16.20.1. Right? And submit mask must be 255.255.128. The full gateway should be 172.16.20.29, which is also the address of that interface connecting the LAN where PC2 belongs. We're done with after doing all the interface addresses. Okay, let's verify our connectivity 
PC1 and PC2 should be able to ping each other and as well as the dual stack server. So let's try for PC1 to ping using our PC, we just go to command prompt and issue right away the ping command. So let's take a look at the IP addresses again. We are at PC1 and we are to ping PC2. So PC2's IP address is 172.16.20.138. Okay. Then we press the enter button. Okay. So we now have a connectivity between PC1 and PC2. So let's do that again. Alright. So this time let's try to ping the dual stack server. Okay. With the IP address indicated on the topology or on our network. Okay. So that's 64.100.1.10. Alright. Okay, so we also had a connectivity to our to the dual stack server. So from PC1, we can we can now connect with PC2 and the dual stack server. So let's verify from PC2 if we can also do the same. So let's ping our PC1, which has an IP address again of 172.16.20.10. Connectivity is okay. PC1 to PC2, PC1 to the dual stack server, PC2 to PC1, and PC2 to dual stack server. Okay, so we're done with part one. Completion now is at 50%, and we need to do part two. This time, configuring IPv6 addressing. Okay, so let's go to R2 this time. Okay. Go to the CLI. Okay. Our password is also Cisco. And the privilege exec mode is class. Okay. All right. From here, we can assign the IP addressing for the interfaces of R2 and, as, and later we'll be configuring the IPv6 address for PC3 and PC4. So let's go to the addressing table, interface, sorry, interface g0 slash 0, okay. First, G0 slash 0, the IP address is this one. For an IPv6, okay, the command must be IPv6 address and then type the given IP address 2001 colon DB8 colon C0DE colon 12 double colon 1 and slash 64 and then press enter again no shot and we're done with the first interface so let's do for the other interface we're done with the two interfaces for the router so now let's proceed to our pcs for the PC, this would be our IP addresses for PC3. Okay, this time we'll be filling in the IPv6 configuration part. So that should be 2001 colon DB8 
column C, 0 D, E, 12, double column A. The slash should be indicated here, 64. Don't forget to indicate the default gateway as per the addressing table as FE, 80, column, column, 2. So, we're done with DC3. Let's proceed to DC4. DC4, the second IP address are 2001, column C, column E, column 13, column A, slash 3, 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 and using the addressing table again, ping PC4. So that's 2001, column BBA, column C0DE, column 13, double column A. In verifying the connectivity for an IPv6, no need to include the slash 64. So we just press enter and we can see that there is a positive reply. So let's try to ping the dual stack in IPv6 format. Okay, so let's ping 2001 BB8, so that's 100, colon 1, double colon A. Okay, so this is the IP address of the dual stack server in version 6. So let's press enter and there is a connectivity. Let's verify from PC4 for the connection with PC3. So let's ping 2001, column BB8, column C, 0 DE, column 12, double A. Right? So this is PC4 connecting to PC3, and we'll also try for the dual stack server. So that's 100, column 1, double column A. Okay. Okay, so we were able to verify that we can now connect from any of the PCs to our other PCs and the dual stack server. So we were able to verify the connectivity as stated on our part 1 and part 2 of our packet tracer activity configure router interfaces. Bye!